Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 8th of October 2011. We have huge spots, coronal mass ejections, and even some aurora, but we have had no major flares. But before we get to why that is happening, let's deal with our trivia question in the form of a riddle. Chinese born, Mongol spread, Arab bred, European led. On this date, Congreve's throng thwarted Bonaparte's plans. One of Stevenson's was awarded £500 in a trial. Many of them caused glares in Baltimore, only to be immortalized later by a key phrase in a song. Who or what am I describing? The answer will be given at the end. In the last 24 hours, we've had just two sea flares, and the X-ray background is dropping quite rapidly. Based on our previous experience, we would therefore expect there to be either fewer active regions or what active regions are there to be decaying, and there to be little or no growth elsewhere. So let's take a look at the active regions and see if that is indeed the case. There are currently six officially numbered active regions on the disk. We have lost 1305 over the northwest limb last night, and no new regions have appeared, let alone been numbered. Region 1306 in the northwest is very close to the limb, and we really can't tell what's going on with that. So let's start as we did yesterday with regions 1309 and 1312 in the northeast. Region 1309 seems to be the only region showing any signs of life. It's developed several satellite spots overnight and actually produced one of the sea flares we've seen. Region 1312 is the only region that according to NOAA has grown. Now it does seem larger, however that may be due to less foreshortening than rather than anything else. Next we turn to region 1310 in the southwest. This region seems to have decayed somewhat, having lost most of its trailer spots. To its north, region 1311 was a single spot yesterday, and seems to be a much smaller single spot today. It looks as though it's being ripped to pieces by the differential rotation, and will not be long with us. Lastly, our most interesting region at the moment is 1313. However, it doesn't seem to have changed a great deal from yesterday, with the possible exception that the leader spot has rotated a little bit anti-clockwise. Such rotation can actually cause flares if it persists for any length of time. There is no sign of any new spots coming over the northeast or the southeast limb. However, if you look at the magnetogram in the northeast, you can begin to see signs of the region that has been producing so much activity behind the northeast limb over the last few days. Hopefully when this appears on the disk, it will give us a little bit more excitement than we've had the last couple of days. So now let's take a look at the continuous evolution of these regions from the data from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. First we'll look at the sunspot movie, then the magnetic movie. Again I would concentrate on region 1313 in the southeast. However, in the magnetic movie, do keep an eye out for small new bipolar regions emerging because they could eventually produce sunspot regions. Once again I'm not even going to bother with the AIA instrument, that seems to be more broken than ever. So we'll use the stereo A data to look at what's going on in the western half of the sun and also to look at the regions that recently have rotated over the west limb. In zero B we're looking at the eastern half of the sun and the regions that are about to rotate onto the disk. Here you can see the region that is about to rotate onto the northeast limb. It looks very bright, however it looks less active than it did yesterday. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, we can see that there's a small coronal hole in the northwest quadrant. That should be producing a high-speed solar wind stream which will bathe the Earth in the next couple of days. So we can expect solar wind velocities to increase. We can see from the Lasco coronagraph on the SOHO mission that we've had an ongoing outflow of coronal mass ejections uh, from all around the Sun, both in the small field of view and in the large C3 field of view. The temperature of the solar wind has remained remarkably low ranging from between 10,000 and 100,000 degrees centigrade. Meanwhile, the velocity of the solar wind has dropped to about 330 kilometers per second, whereas the density has been varying all over the place. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes seems to be recovering towards more normal levels, and we have had no sign of a proton event in the last 48 hours. From the NOAA 19 satellite, we can see that the auroral zone is a lot weaker than it was yesterday, and has retreated further north. The KP index has been varying between 1 and 2, which is rated as quiet, and NOAA carried no space weather warnings in the last 24 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background has fallen to the B3 level, the sunspot number is at 88, the radio sun intensity is about the same as it was yesterday at 122, the solar wind speed has dropped to 330 km per second, 
with a solar wind density of about one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are generally considered quiet. My short-term forecast then is that C flares are possible, M flares are unlikely, and X flares are very unlikely. Sunspot numbers should go lower, CMEs remain likely, the solar wind speed should go higher, and the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm is unlikely. The composite coronal image shows us that we should be expecting to see the first sunspots from the region in the northeast, either late today or early tomorrow, and hopefully we get some very exciting events out of this region. The answer to the trivia question is rockets. The Chinese invented them, the technology was spread west to Arabia via Mongolian invasions, then to Western Europe, initially Italy, but then throughout Western Europe. Congreve's throng refers to the raid on Boulogne by Sir William Congreve, who used his rockets to destroy the French fleet and throw Napoleon's grand army into disarray, causing him to abandon his plans to invade Britain. In 1989, Stevenson's rocket won the £500 prize for the only steam locomotive to complete the speed and reliability trials. Congreve rockets were used against Fort McHenry in Baltimore during the War of 1812, prompting Francis Scott Key to write the poem that has become the US national anthem that includes the words and the rocket's red glare. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.